Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I've had a request from the lovely Christina from Learning for Dad 2016. I'll put her details below. Her channel's just about how her and her family deal with their father's dementia. She has requested that I do a video about bathing. Obviously the problems with bathing is that a lot of dementia patients don't want to bathe at all, whether it is just washing their hands, um, whether it's having a top and towel wash, or a full bath or shower. Um, they often refuse to, there can often be quite a few problems when it comes to bathing. So I'm just gonna go through that. And I'm also gonna discuss um, ways of bathing people. I'll just talk you through tips and ways that I kind of bathed Brenda throughout the process of her dementia. I'm not going to touch on end of life care because that's not what this is about but I'll just talk about kind of the early and mid stages of dementia. So I'll touch first of all on just general kind of hygiene whether it's just washing their hands or washing their face and um, believe it or not this can be as difficult as getting somebody in the bath. Sometimes you'll find that people just don't want to wash their hands before or after dinner or after they've been to the toilet. As you're probably aware, a lot of people with dementia tend to maybe touch things that they shouldn't touch. They they seem to get quite dirty, almost like a toddler would, you know, their hands kind of go everywhere. You'll find weird things in their pockets and things. So germs is, is quite a big problem with dementia. If you have got a loved one who's maybe refusing to wash their hands, the best thing to do is try not to stress about it too much. You know, it, it's not nice, but it's not the end of the world. Obviously, if their hands are really soiled, particularly if they're going to be eating, you want to get them hands clean. I would suggest just getting yourself a flannel and wetting it at a nice warm temperature and just kind of persuade your loved one, even just to hold it, maybe put a little bit of soap on it as they do kind of touch it, may even lather up a little bit, um, or just even just wets their hands a little bit. I mean, that is better than nothing. You'll find that they'll probably quite like the feeling of it. Brenda had these, these hands that she was constantly fiddling with something. So putting like a warm soapy flannel in her hands, she would just sit there and just work it around her fingers because she liked the touch of it. And if you have got soap on it, it'd probably smell quite nice as well. You know, they may even want to put it on their face. And if you're handing them the flannel and they, they're really not interested, show them yourself, you know, do it on yourself. Go, oh, this feels really nice. Because you, you may find also that they don't actually understand what you want them to do. Um, so by kind of showing them beforehand, they can kind of understand what you're talking about. Another thing I will cover with this actually is if you are trying to persuade a loved one to do something like this, um, you need to get to their level. I mean, Brenda was really, really short and I'm, I'm a pretty tall girl. So I would always kind of come down to her level so we were face to face. Obviously, I didn't want to be right, right in her face because you find with a lot of dementia patients, especially as time goes on, they start to lose their peripheral vision. So you, you kind of need to get in front of them, you know, talking to them at the side or kind of waving your arms around in front of them is just going to confuse them and they may not even see half of it. Um, and they're certainly not going to understand what you're, what you're trying to say. Any time that you are showing them how to do something, stand in front of them, kind of in their eye line, and slowly just go through what it is that you want them to do, why you want them to do it. Um, and like I said, show them that it feels really nice to you know, wipe this flannel around their face. And also, if you're gonna hand them something, um, I myself, I'm right-handed, um, and Brenda was right-handed. So whenever I handed her something, I would always place it into her right hand. That's the hand that she's gonna have the most kind of motor memory or, or muscle memory if you like. She wasn't left-handed so any sort of memory using her left hand is going to go far quicker than it is when using her right side, um, if that kind of makes sense. If you want to actually bathe your loved one, uh, whether it be a bath, shower 
or just even a top and tail wash that can be difficult sometimes um, not only they maybe not want to do it but they've also a lot of the time forgotten what they're supposed to be doing we quite early on actually got a shower a walking shower put into the bathroom we took the bath out and put the walking shower in and i have to say if i was to give you one tip that would be the best thing you could do um obviously not everyone is going to be able to do it for a multiple of reasons um but if you are able to do that then i absolutely recommend it i have said in a previous video that one of the things we did with Brenda very early on was that we got her into a routine. If you're able to do this, if you're a full-time carer for your loved one and you, you see them every day or see them most days, it just makes life a bit easier. Although Brenda didn't necessarily remember the routine, she had kind of learned it, you know, and I could, I could see if she was having an off day, it became quite clear to me. It was quite a good way for me to monitor her deterioration. I cannot, explain to you how strict this routine was um down to the way that i handed her things like i said i would always hand her something into her right hand the things that i would say to her were exactly the same every day i would start off with explaining to her it was morning time and that once she'd had a shower she could then have her breakfast and we could sit and have a nice cup of tea etc etc um I was very lucky with Brenda, she, she never really fought us when it came to um, washing, you know, she was quite happy to get in the shower, she kind of done what she was told, but I appreciate that it's not like that for everybody. Um, but I would still remain very calm, um, like I said, everything I said to her was, was the same every day, with a nice soft voice, very clear and concise. I didn't do any kind of big movements. I would always stand in front of her, kind of get to her eye level. It's such a personal thing for people. Um, and we all have our own routine. Um, you know, even if you're not aware of it, you do. You have a routine, the way you do things. Um, so it was just a case of getting Brenda into a different routine. So once I explained to her what we were doing, I would obviously then have to undress her. Over time, this became more difficult because because she had forgotten how to, you know, unbutton a shirt or take her trousers off. Uh, you have to be patient, kind of stay focused. I also never spoke about other things. I was always completely focused on this. You know, I didn't halfway through taking a top off. I didn't say, how are you today, Brenda? You know because that's just going to confuse them, it's just going to distract them. Bathing is quite a scary experience for someone with dementia. Even if you haven't got dementia, I mean, I myself have been in hospital several times and I've had to be bathed myself. Um, I don't have dementia and it wasn't a nice experience, I can assure you, it is embarrassing. You do feel very vulnerable. The shower was open, we always left the door open on the shower, so I had you know, I could literally get in there with her if I wanted to. We had two flannels. We would have a white flannel and a black flannel. Um, the white flannel was for her face and her kind of top half of her body. The black flannel was obviously for her private parts and for her bottom. She understood that there was two flannels for two different things. Um, and it was pretty obvious because of the colours what they would be. At the beginning, um, when her dementia maybe wasn't quite as bad, um, I would give her the flannel, I would give her the soap. She would put the soap on the flannel herself and I obviously would tell her, put, put the soap on the flannel, give your face a wash, do your underarm, do this, do that. Um, but she was able to do it all herself. The only thing I would do would be her back and her legs. This also meant that she gained some independence uh, because she could do these things herself. She just needed monitoring and supervising. She wouldn't have known if she was washing her face or her feet if I hadn't have actually told her. But she could physically do these things. Obviously, over time, as the dementia got, got worse, um, maybe putting the soap on the flannel herself 
it became challenging you know it was things like that that she just couldn't grasp um you know and she would she would drop the soap or she'd drop the flannel and of course that would make her flustered um or upset so over time i would put the soap on the flannel and then i would hand her the flannel and i would say to her right the soap's on there brenda you know you give your face a wash or you you do your underarm or, or whatever it was um so she still had that independence i still wasn't touching her in you know awkward places or anything like that she was happy with that you know by that stage she 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 trusted me although she maybe didn't know exactly who i was she knew that this kind of this woman come to her every day and, and helped her get washed and dressed and i never got frustrated with her even if i was having a bad day and, and you know she was maybe driving me a little crazy you just just kept calm like i said before i always had her face in me we was always kind of at eye level with one another um and i would just slowly hand her these things always going into her right hand everything i said everything i done was exactly the same in the exact same order every single day so once she was out of the shower the you know the routine continued she would always have two towels you know she would have one for her top and one for her bottom i had to make sure that the temperature of the room was was warm but also i would make sure the towels were warm they would be on the radiator or you know maybe would have put them in the tumble dryer for just a couple of minutes while i was getting her washed in the shower and she would often go oh that's lovely you know she really enjoyed that so if you are having trouble getting your loved one um to wash or to kind of cooperate it is little things like that that over time you will learn that they do like um you know and there's certain towels that she liked more than other towels you know and it sounds silly um but it did make a difference she had a towel with her name on it and i would always try and use that one if it was clean because she really she really liked it it was very soft she liked the color it obviously had her name on it um and it was just these little things that kind of made the experience a little bit more enjoyable for her the reason why i had two towels one for the top one for the bottom would be it meant that i could keep her warm and also keep her covered you know keep her modesty a little bit while i was getting her dressed and also it meant that we could dry her together so maybe she would dry herself with the top towel with the other towel i could get on my knees and i could do her legs and her feet and we could get her as dry as quickly as possible the way we got her dressed again it was the same every single day i mean i remember she would always wear a bra <laughs> there was really no no reason for her to wear a bra um it just it, it just wasn't necessary and she always insisted on wearing a bra and there was a couple of times i i tried to maybe leave that out of the routine um and she always always noticed actually um, even till much later on try not to fight them you know if there's certain things that they want to wear or there's certain things that they want to do and if these things aren't actually causing a problem um then why not let them do it it just makes the whole process a little bit easier so that would be basically mine and brenda's routine every single day um you know once once she was showered and and she'd had her breakfast i'd get her to do her, her teeth and her dentures and again everything we did it was exactly the same i'd hand her the things in the same way at the, you know the same point and um say the same things to her and it is very repetitive it goes on and on and it is like groundhog day um for us obviously but for them it's it just reassures them it gives them stability um over an evening it would be the same obviously 
we would only do like a top and tail wash but again we'd have the white flannel and the black flannel and like before if she was able to I'd get her to put the soap on I'd explain to her what it is that I wanted her to do why I wanted her to do it you'd get the common one especially of an evening oh I've already had a wash and it wasn't because she didn't want to wash because Brenda wasn't really like that um, it was just because she had no sense of time she had no kind of sense of what time of day it was so she would always presume that she had already had a wash but you would just say oh it's all right Brenda we'll, we'll have another one you know there's no harm in having another wash if she was really adamant that she had had a wash sometimes I just let her get away with it you know it's not the worst thing in the world if she doesn't have one wash before she goes to bed you know um obviously if this is happening every single night or every single day um it then becomes a problem but because she would have the shower in the morning um it wasn't too much of a drama for us not to give her a wash in the evening as long as her dentures are out and they'd been cleaned and she had a clean pad on um and was was clean down there you know she'd had no accidents or anything during the day um then that was really all that mattered of an evening time. Brenda never really kind of played up, but there, you know, there would be a few things that would happen quite early on, um, especially when we still had the bath, actually. She would weirdly be convinced that um, people were using her bathroom. I don't know where she got it from, she would often say that the kids at the school was using her bath and that she would let them come in and use her bath and that she was okay with that she was happy for these 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 children to come in and use her bath but what really annoyed her was that they were using her towel um obviously there were no children and they certainly weren't coming in and using her bath at the beginning you'd, you'd fight and fight and fight with her over it um and it would really annoy you, you know, because you think, what, this is ridiculous, you know, <laughs> of course the children aren't coming and using your bath. Um, over time you just come to realise that actually, if, if that's what she wants to believe, and she's okay with that. So, if she did come up with the whole, oh, these their kids have been in and they've used my bath again, I would make sure that she would visually see me get out a clean towel. I'll go, oh, if, if they've been in Brenda, oh, okay, in that case, let's get a clean towel out. Even if the towel that was on the side was perfectly clean, perfectly usable, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, I could have told her till I was blue in the face that it was a clean towel and, you know, that they hadn't been there and they hadn't used it, but she would never have believed me. So just the simple thing of her seeing me get out a clean towel putting it on the radiator and go oh, it's gonna be nice and warm and you go oh yeah that you know that's nice um like I said you just need to get into their world um to them it is their reality it is absolutely real you know to think that children are coming in and using her bath to us is complete madness and it would never ever happen um but to her that is her reality so you just have to go with that and make it a happy reality. Obviously, there's gonna be people all over the world doing and saying all kinds of strange things. And it is up to you as the caregiver just to kind of work out what works best best for you. Oh, and another thing, thing as well, they are a different generation to us now. Um, there are gonna be certain things that they do because of the generation and the things that they done when they were younger. Um, so just bear that in mind but my grandparents and, and Brenda when they were my age washing every single day wasn't wasn't the thing to do you know um, a bath maybe once or twice a week was what they used to that that older generation that is what they used to um, yes of course they would have a wash um, you know they would have a wash every day but they certainly didn't bath or shower every single day it just didn't happen then um and you just have to kind of bear that in mind i think that covers it all <laughs> i think i've covered everything that i wanted to say i hope this helps um if i think of anything else i'll pop it in the comments below um 
but I think that does pretty much cover it just adapt this to your kind of your setting you know whether you're gonna be bathing showering washing or if it's just a simple hand wash you can only do your best obviously you want to keep them as clean as possible just choose your battles <laughs> i'll see you next time guys thanks very much for watching